Hello everyone, I'm truly thrilled to see so many people on this workshop. It's an honor to be with a group of people who wants to make a difference and lead the way for others. Welcome to the CRUR Workshop Part 2. Please allow me to do a quick recap on CRUR Workshop Part 1. I will discuss the various efficiency matrix. We did a poll and PUE is found to be the most commonly used. However, though PUE is a good metric, it is not an indicator of the overall data center efficiency. I will introduce CRUR, how CRUR coexists with PUE to create a powerful solution that will help you with capacity planning, identifying design flaws, and designing better future data centers. I would also explain the three types of CRUR matrix, CRURF, CRURIT, and CRURITF. Today, Edward will give you a deep dive into the details on CRURF. He will share how to calculate CRURF and give you practical suggestions on how to collect the relevant data and a calculation of CRURF of a real data center. We will have a Q&A at the end of Edward's presentation. And now I will hand over the show to Edward. Right, so uh, thank you very much, Paige, for the introduction and uh, welcome everybody. Well, let me bring up the slide deck for you. So again, uh, welcome. Good to see that uh, quite a few people are returning for the show. So what uh, as Paige introduced, uh, we're going to do today is give a better view on the subcomponent being the CRUR uh, facility. Uh, what we're going to do is talk more about the, uh, the CRUR in detail. So as you uh, probably no, at least for those of you who have attended, there were three areas within the overall CRUR. This was the facility portion, we had the IT portion, and then we had the combination of the two, uh, which basically makes the overall uh, CRUR number. For the presentation of today, we're going to zoom in on the facility portion, what it is all about, and you know what are information you would need to collect in order to start looking at this number. So CRUR facility, indicated by the lower number F, is basically looking at three aspects of the facility. We're looking at the power capacity aspect, and in that one we subdivide it into the stranded power capacity as well as the uh, utilization of the capacity. We are looking at the mechanical capacity, and we start comparing the mechanical capacity against the uh, power utilization, as well as the mechanical capacity utilization ratio itself. And the last portion is the physical capacity of the data center, uh, the computer room itself, uh, in terms of the rec location utilization. Um, as you uh, can see on this uh, bottom of the slide, uh, the CRUF is basically adding the individual ratios divided by five. So we're basically taking the average of the five sub ratios that we are measuring for the facility. Uh, for those of you who attended last time, I explained that we are in the CRUR, not putting in any weight factors. So if we look back at, say, this particular formula, uh, five components, we are not putting a weight factor on those components, uh, because obviously that would lead to very skewed results for different data centers for different purposes. Uh, a commercial data center might have different weight factors than an enterprise data center. And of course, uh, we want to make sure that whatever number is coming up as a baseline for organizations that they can truly compare rather than you know uh, changing weight factors uh, into their own benefit. So let's go for a first poll. Yeah, uh, because the first thing we are going to look at is the power capacity. So let me launch the poll here, which hopefully should be on your screen. And the question in that particular poll is talking about the uh, UPS capacity. So do you know how much UPS, uh, UPS capacity in kilowatt uh, is installed in your data center? Eh? Now, if you have an enterprise data center, then it might be easier compared to, for example, a, uh, a commercial data center where you might have uh, private suites and caging where uh, a customer 
that is renting space you might have installed even their own. So the question is, do we know exactly how much uh, UPS capacity is available? And that in kilowatt. Yeah? So the answers uh, could be, I know exactly, or I know the UPS capacity, but not fully aware of all. Uh, I know the capacity in KVA, but not in KW. Yeah? So KVA, kilovolt and per kilowatt. Or I know exactly the UPS capacity installed and how much is allocated for N, as well as how much for the redundancy. So for example, if we have two legs, uh, let's say each leg is 100 kilowatt, uh, 100 kilowatt is the, ex, uh, the capacity you can use, and the other 100 kilowatt is for redundancy. So let's have a look at the poll results. Uh, let's see, okay, the uh, numbers are coming in still more. Okay, it's climbing up, climbing up. Oh, it's very nice because 75% of you have actually answered. So let's close the poll now. And here are the results. So a number of you say, well, I know the UPS capacity, uh, but I'm not fully aware of what the customer might have installed. Now, I suspect that these are obviously commercial data center operator owners, where sometimes it's very hard to know what the customer actually have done in their own private area. Um, some say, I know the capacity in KVA, but not sure about kilowatt. Uh, there is a difference between KVA and kilowatt. Uh, uh, KVA is a parent power and kilowatt is actual uh, energy consumption. Um, and there is a difference between those two. So for CRUR, we are uh, after the number in KW. So if you are aware of KVA, but not in kilowatt, uh, then you need to start figuring out what the capacity is in KW. Uh, the manufacturer of your UPS can indicate that you might find the brochure, or you could even look at the, the label on the UPS, typically on the back. And some say, I know exactly what is installed, how much is there for N, and how much is there for redundancy. So 70% have a pretty good handle on all that is required. Uh, and uh, 25, or is it 30% uh, might need to uh, do a bit of further investigations uh, to understand that I saw that I forgot to hit the share button. So let me share the results on the screen so you can actually see it yourself as well. Yeah, so 30% of you yeah, would need to do some extra investigation uh, when you want to apply the CRUR. All right, back to the slides. So a couple of factors uh, as indicated for the power. Uh, we're looking the first one at what we call the SPCR, which is the stranded power capacity. Now, what is stranded power capacity? Basically, that is unused capacity when you are running in a traditional uh, setup and everything is okay. So we don't have a failure on the UPS or other uh, nasty things going on. Uh, everything is running. Now, as you know, a lot of data centers are by default adding in a lot of extra capacity for redundancy purposes. Yeah, And that redundancy purpose uh, capacity can only be used obviously when there is a scenario of a failure. So very simply put here, yeah, in this case, you have, for example, a, a traditional setup with A and B supply. Uh, we normally have a maximum base load, uh, that is the load that you allow as a data center. Uh, then we typically have some buffer, uh, because theoretically it could be 50 50% uh, separation, but we normally go for about 40% maximum load, because we allow for some peak loading and some buffering. And then, of course, we have the other part, which is kind of unused, right? So the idea is, of course, that once the, for example, B supply fails for whatever reason, that that load is being added to the A supply. Yeah, and then adds up to basically the 100%. Now, depending on what type of setup you have in your data center, yeah, there could be quite a difference in terms of stranded capacity. Yeah, So if you're looking at the traditional design that you see on this chart on the left, uh, where we have what we call traditionally the N plus N, yeah, in a traditional data center where everything is up and running, theoretically 50% load goes to the left and 50% uh, goes to the right. So then we get to deal uh, with a scenario where 50% is basically going to waste. So in this data center, we have 400 capacity installed, but actually are only using 200. So we have a 200 yeah, kilowatt basically uh, not allocated. Now you could also do different scenarios where, for example, we have a catcher system or where we have a distributed redundant system and all of them will lead to a different stranded capacity. So in this case, uh, what is the SPCR? Basically, we say it's the N capacity, yeah? And we divide it by the total capacity that is installed in your data center. And again, be aware, 
that this number has to be calculated based on KW. Yeah. So in the left scenario, where we have an N capacity, the maximum load capacity will be theoretically 200 kilowatt. Yeah, we're assuming here 100% load. We have installed 400. So by right, your SPCR will be 200 over 400, basically coming with 0 0.5. Now in a catcher scenario, that might be different. So in this scenario, we have still an N capacity of 200, but by a different redundancy matrix or setup, we can now actually reduce the total capacity installed, leading to a higher SPCR ratio. Okay, so this could be one way where you can have less capacity installed uh, versus capacity used. We could also have the distributed redundant system. Yeah, uh, that is explained in this particular uh, picture, where again we have a 200 kilowatt uh, potentially of the loading, and I see it here in a different way. Um, uh, spread over, uh, it's roughly uh, uh, not 200 kilowatt exactly, it's 198, right? Three times 66, but I rounded the numbers down. So, and again, by virtually distributing the uh, load over various UPSs rather than N plus N, again, we can hire a higher SPCR ratio, okay? Now, strength of capacity, if you have a mix of uh, uh, commercial uh, uh, mixed environment there, like what we typically have in a commercial data center where we have, for example, different floors, or we might have different UPSs allocated for different type of floors, then we need to start doing uh, a calculation for each particular area, right? So ideally, if you're running a commercial data center, you are looking at say, what UPSs we have allocated for which floors or which cages, et cetera, you do a calculation for that environment. Then you do the same calculation for another floor, for example, where we have dedicated UPSs for a particular environment. And then you add those numbers up and you basically uh, do a, uh, uh, is it a average out of those areas. Now, the UPS capacity that we are after is only the one that is related to the IT room, so to the computer room. Now, I know that in some scenarios, uh, there are data centers where UPS are allocated for different parts of the infrastructure as well, like security systems, monitoring, as well as for, in some selected cases, even the air conditioning equipment. That one, yeah, that is not taken into consideration. Eh? So when you look at your UPS capacity, it's purely the ones that are related to support a critical load in the computer room being the ICT load. Now, in this case, uh, uh, just to explain how that would work, uh, here we have, for example, a scenario where we have a, a commercial data center set up. Yeah, we have two big UPSs downstairs in the building. We have room A for one customer, and we have another room B for another customer. Now, in this example, we see that the customer in room A is enjoying the power from the main supply from the commercial data center operator, whereas in room B, the customer has decided to add extra UPS capacity, which some customers do because they feel more confident that if they have their own UPSs that in case there is something on the main UPS, then at least they have their own support. Now, when you do the CRUR calculation for your overall building, you need to take that into account. So in this case, uh, we have uh, assumed that a 200 kilowatt maximum load. Normally it will be 400 kilowatts that the commercial data center have installed, but in this case, due to the added capacity uh, in room B, we need to add that one as up. So now we come to a total KW of the UPS installed to 500, eh? 200 plus 200 plus two times 50, and the end capacity hasn't changed. So now you see that the actual SPCR rating is dropping, and that is obviously not desirable, and that's something that the commercial data center then might have to discuss with the customer. The other option that we are looking at, uh, or the other criteria we're looking at in the power capacity is PCUR. So that is the power capacity utilization ratio. So basically what we try to do here is to understand how much power is actually being used versus what is being installed. Yeah? And the whole idea is here, of course, to make sure that ideally, yeah, that the load that you have is as close to the installation that you have prepared. There is obviously no point in having a one megawatt data center and only running 100 kilowatt load because then you have overspent yeah, a lot of money for no reason. The equipment runs less efficient and basically your capacity yeah, is too, too far allocated. So there are scenarios where there is something that we can't do about. 
Yeah, in the end of the day, when you're starting a data center, you might not have the full load yet, and you start ramping it up over the next few days, weeks, months, or even years. Uh, but ideally, we try to match it as close to the capacity that we have designed for. Um, so this particular ratio, the PCUR, can really help you understand where you are on the scale yeah, in terms of utilization of your uh, design capacity. So PCUR, very simple calculation, total ICT load. Now, this is basically the current load that is in the computer rooms. Now, normally that load is relatively stable. Uh, there might be a, a bit of fluctuation due to activity on the system, uh, backups running, not backup uh, running, those kind of scenarios. Uh, but overall is typically stable. Uh, the rule in CRUR is that if your load is pretty much stable within the 50%, then you can just measure it as one. But once you start exceeding that, then by right, you should measure it over a seven day uh, consecutive period uh, and then average that load out. Um, again, this is all the ICT load only. Okay. Now, how do you know what is the ICT load? Well, most of the UPSs uh, will have a meter that tells exactly what the utilization is in terms of kilowatt on your UPS. Again, be careful because some UPSs will indicate it as KVA. Yeah, some of the UPSs can do KVA and kilowatt. Uh, so take the right number. Of course, if you have a BMS yeah, or any other tool like uh, uh, DCIM, etc., then very often you can take these numbers from those tools directly as well. So we compare what is currently being used versus what is being ex uh, uh, installed. Yeah, but when we are comparing it here, we do not take into account the redundancy. So if I look, for example, at the previous scenario where I have 200 kilowatt on leg A, 200 kilowatt on leg B, and that, that leg B is basically there for redundancy, then I would take the N capacity, which is 200 in that example, yeah, and then take that uh, as the baseline to measure against the ICT load. So we don't take 400, we take uh, one capacity, N. So in this case, typical scenario, we have a customer, uh, two times uh, 200 kilowatt installed, we have an 80 kilowatt load, which is you know pretty nice, right? Um, but uh, you can see that if we are looking at the actual impact on the PCUR, we can see that 80 over 200, uh, not 400, is only a 0.2 uh, ratio. So this data center clearly has a lot of uh, space to grow. Now, where you have multiple computer rooms, yeah, what you could do um, if they have at least their own UPS input uh, or output uh, support, uh, calculate the PCR for each room and then just do an average out. Uh, and this might be something that uh, in an enterprise data center, uh, maybe not so common, but for commercial data centers, it's, it's uh, relatively common to find different parts of the building to be supported by different UPS infrastructure. So that's where you need to look at. If you have power distribution that is uh, in a different way, let's say that you have the scenario that I explained to you in room B, where we have the traditional UPSs for the building, but a customer still decides to add extra UPS capacity in the racks, et cetera, uh, that by right should be added. If you're using OCP, then you might not have a UPS at all because basically in an OCP environment, uh, the, uh, the power capacity uh, uh, conversion from AC to DC and the, the battery backup for it is installed in the rack itself. So then obviously you need to take that one uh, into account. Okay. So again, multiple computer rooms, measure it by computer room if they have their own UPS. If you have multiple computer rooms uh, all connected to one UPS, then you only take that one UPS, of course. Uh, but if you have shared, you average it out and then you take the number from there. So let's have a look at poll number two, uh, because we are going to look now at the mechanical capacity. So in the mechanical capacity, yeah, the question is, do you know exactly how much the sensible heat capacity in kilowatt again is installed inside each computer room and how much is allocated for N and how much for redundancy? Now, be aware, we are looking here at sensible heat capacity. Okay, so be aware, eh? if somebody says I have six ton of air conditioning cooling, you need to know whether that allocation is for sensible. So the answer is, I'm not sure what is actually defined as sensible heat capacity. I know the capacity of the air conditioning, but not sure whether that is the general rating or the sensible heat rating. Um, I know exactly the air conditioning capacity based on sensible heat rating, and I know exactly how much is allocated for N and how much is there allocated for the redundancy. So the poll is open. 
let's see. We see the numbers climbing up. 50%, we are running towards 60% of you answering. Let's see whether we can hit again the 75% of you answering. That would be lovely. Okay, numbers are still climbing. Okay, 70%. Let's see whether we can hit more. A couple more seconds. Okay, it's start topping off now. Okay, let's uh, close the poll and let's share the results now immediately. That was the best plan. So as you can see here, uh, quite a few people, 20% of you are not fully aware what actually sensible heat capacity means. Um, and that's very important because what is happening in cooling technology, we have normally what we call latent heat and we have what we call sensible heat. Sensible heat is basically a heat that is not injecting or affecting humidity. We as a human, we are latent heat because we are yeah, injecting humidity, we evaporating our sweat, etc. That is latent heat. Sensible heat is purely call it temperature change. So for example, uh, IT equipment doesn't perspire, right? So that is sensible heat. And air conditioners have typically a latent heat per ratio and a sensible heat ratio. So we need to look at the sensible heat ratio because that's really what we need to compare against. Uh, some of you say, I know the capacity for the air conditioners, but not sure whether it's actually the sensible. And then another amount say, you know, I'm really fully aware of everything. I know what the sensible capacity ratio is and, and what is allocated. So here you can see that actually, relatively speaking, a small portion yeah, of you know exactly what is happening and that uh, quite a few of you are still, you know, not 100% sure about what the sensible uh, heat actually is or how, uh, what the rating is of your air conditioning. So again, this is the homework, right? Uh, we need to investigate for the air conditioners that you have installed, what the sensible heat capacity ratio is. Uh, and that one you can find out either in the technical data, again, of the air conditioners, or you can check with your vendors and ask them to supply you with those numbers because that's a very important numbers. If you don't have the right number, uh, then typically what you will find is that the overall rating of the air conditioner is higher than the sensible rating. So that could negatively impact your uh, uh, ratings uh, as per the CRUR. So very important. Let's do a stop sharing and continue with the slides. As I said, yeah, in terms of the mechanical portion of the CRUR facility, we are looking at the MPUR, which is the mechanical versus power utilization ratio. So what we are compa basically comparing here, say, how much cooling capacity have you installed based on sensible versus how much UPS uh, capacity do you have installed? Now, for those of you who have attended the first session, I explained to you that heat cannot be destroyed and heat cannot, or sorry, energy cannot be destroyed and energy cannot be created. Energy is always transforming. So theoretically, if we have a hundred kilowatt UPS, theoretically, you only need 100 kilowatt of sensible cooling capacity. Of course, in a computer room, there is some latent heat injected as well. Uh, when you and I walk around, uh, maybe some evaporation from the walls, uh, expiring, uh, uh, venting out some of the humidity if there's no proper vapor barriers installed. Uh, but in general, it's sensible. So what is happening? Theoretically, your computer room design, if you have 100 kilowatt of UPS, you only need 100 kilowatt of air conditioning installed. That is theoretically the case. Now, we know that some of the designers say, well, uh, there will be mixing of air in the room. Uh, the customer might have different heat capacity requirements in different racks. So we add in a bit extra to make sure that we don't run short in certain racks. So we overdimension. Now, in itself, that could be an, an idea. Uh, but we want to make sure that we are not oversizing too much because then obviously, again, we throw a lot of money away at the CapEx side, uh, the, the, uh, the hard cash that you pay to purchase equipment, but also on the operating side. We also know that running air conditioners at a too low load, the air conditioners are not very happy. In other words, they will have more failures and there will be more power consumption as well. Okay. So in order for you to start calculating, the first thing we need to do is go back to the air, uh, sorry, the UPS capacity. So we try to find out what is the kilowatt rating. Again, for those of you who know the KVA, but not the kilowatt, uh, check the numbers 
and again look at the n capacity so in our example where we have 200 plus 200 we're looking at the number 200 then you go to the air conditioning side and you start looking at the ac capacity and now we want to have the number in kilowatt and based on shr central heat ratio okay if you have multiple air conditions running for redundancy, there are two, typically two scenarios. Uh, we could have a scenario where actually all the air conditions are running because we assume that if one of the air conditions goes down for maintenance or uh, failure, that there is no impact. In some data centers, we see scenarios where air conditions are running in a rotation capacity. So we might have two air conditions shut down and after 24 hours, those two air conditions are uh, started up and we shut down another two air conditioners so that basically the redundant air conditioners are on standby. If the air conditioners are all running, you need to add the capacity of all air conditioners running you know, at any given time. If you have standby air conditioners on a rotational basis, then you take the capacity that you normally shut down in traditional where everything is running and you minus off that capacity. So in this case, you have, for example, a computer room, uh, five units of 50 kilowatt net sensible cooling capacity configured as N plus one. But in this particular case, the customer says, I have them all running. Okay, we don't have a rotational schedule. So theoretically, we have 250 kW of sensible cooling capacity. Computer room is supported by 200 kilowatt UPS, eh, the N plus N, as per the example, but we may need to take only N. So simple calculation again, we divide 200, being the UPS capacity as N, divided by the full air conditioning capacity in this case, five times 50, and we will end up in a ratio or for the MPUR of 0 0.8. Then we have the other scenario, uh, the other uh, metric, which is the NCUR, and that is looking at the mechanical capacity that you have versus the utilization, okay? Now, obviously this is very important, because this ratio will uh, indicate how much capacity you have left. So this could be used, of course, for your capacity planning, right? Because if I have 250 kW of cooling capacity, but only 80 kilowatt of heat load generated by IT, then of course, I still have the ability to add more IT load. I could also say if I have 250 kilowatt running, but only 80 kilowatt of heat load, I might want to look at a rotational schedule where I shut down air conditioners uh, of course, rotational schedules have pros and cons, I understand that, uh, and in some cases, depending on your uh, computer room layout and setup, you might not be able to shut down certain capacity because you might end up in pressure loss under the floor to the point where cooling is just not effective anymore. So um, this is not a black and white scenario, right? there are other factors that uh, could make you decide to keep the capacity running or not. But of course, uh, too much oversizing. Uh, will have a profound impact on CAPEX and OPEX. So this is something that during the design stage, you definitely want to look at. Um, you might want to look at uh, scenarios of how to add capacity over time to make sure that you're not designing fully for the end capacity compared to what you need as of day one. Uh, so those are some of the areas that you can look at. Now, the simple formula for MCUR is the IT load divided by capacity. And again, when we talk about the ICT load, we need to look at the KW. And again, we apply the rule that if there is too much variation, we need to take an average over a seven day consecutive period. Or uh, uh, if it's a stable load, then we can just take the number, uh, uh, whatever the number is on that day. The air conditioning capacity, again, KW uh, based on sensible heat. And again, we take off any non-active units. So in this case, uh, let's say that we had a computer room that you saw before, eight kilowatt was running. We have five units of 50 kW running all the time. So the simple uh, calculation is 80 in terms of the kilowatt of ICD load divided by 250, which will give me a ratio of 0 0.32. Let's go to the third poll question. That will be the last one, as it is also addressing the last portion of the CIUR uh, facility calculation. And the question is, do you know exactly how much use space you have installed in your computer room? Uh, use space, as you know, a rack is typically, uh, uh, you know, 42U or 48U, et cetera. So the question is, how much do you have installed? And do you know exactly how much you have 
currently in use? Okay, so there are two things that we want you to answer. Do you know exactly how much space you have uh, designed for and how much space you actively have today in use? So the poll is open. We see the numbers climbing up rapidly as usual, which is great. I really like that you guys are so active. Uh, not every webinar is like this. So this is really nice. Uh, we're almost hitting 60%. 60% of you have answered. Let's see whether we can bring it up all the way to 70% again. Don't be shy, hit that button. Okay, we're climbing up, we're almost hitting 70% again. Okay, a few more. Let's see. Okay, we seem to be running up a bit. Okay, we're almost there. Once we hit 70, I will close the poll. We are at 68%, 69. Okay. Let's do one more. All righty. Excellent. 70% of you have answered. So let me close the poll for now and let me share the results. Okay. So here are results. First one, no idea at all. So some of you have either no idea about how much U capacity you have in your computer room or computer rooms, or maybe you have no idea of uh, you know, how much is actually installed. Some say, you know what, I, I basically have a good idea, gut feeling, but you know, don't ask me about the exact number. And then a fair bit, very good, 50%, pretty much, yeah, say, I know exactly how much I have installed uh, and exactly how much is currently in use. So uh, that is a very, very good thing, of course. Now, this is sometimes a bit more harder, to be honest, because when we are looking at, say, the KW ratings and air conditioning raters, uh, most of the time we can measure it because the BMS will give you this information, but a BMS cannot tell you how much rec space you have installed and how much is being utilized. Typically that requires other software like DCIM, or maybe some of you still use Visio and, and Excel, etc. but it's a little bit more cumbersome. And what we also see is that um, not everybody yeah, is handling asset management very appropriately. So sometimes, you know, we, we start off on day one with uh, making sure that everything is nicely documented, but then over time, we see sometimes that, you know, the asset management process is not working well and people plug equipment in and take equipment out and it's just simply not updated in the documentation. It's a very common problem. Let me stop the sharing and go back to the slide deck. So what is the metric that we set for the allocation in the computer room? We call that the metric, uh, submetric R, U, U, R, the rect utilization uh, ratio. And basically, this is assuming that your computer room is based on RECs, okay? So here we have, for example, a scenario where you might have a mixed environment. Let's say you have EMC storage cabinets, et cetera. Well, obviously that one is out of scope. Uh, you might have a mainframe uh, standing somewhere, uh, or you might have a storage array somewhere. Uh, those are out of spec. So we're looking at the traditional 19, 21 inch type of RECs that are typically, you know, up to 42U or 50, uh, 50 or uh, 48U, etc. We don't care about the depth. Yeah, we only care about front location space, i.e. the U space. So in a 42U rec, we have 42U available. Whether you have plugged in, say, top of the rack or end of the row type of network devices to accommodate the patching into the racks, uh, we don't care, right? Because ultimately, if we have a 42U rack, and you have a switch in the top of one or two U, then basically the rec space is there, the allocation for active IT equipment is there as well. Okay, so in this case, we have a 50 uh, a room, uh, a room, sorry, with 50 racks, uh, the traditional 19 inch rack, which has a 42 U allocation. Uh, there is a bunch of IT equipment in there. You can see that here, they have a bunch of uh, hubs, uh, servers uh, based on two U, a bunch of servers on four U, and they have a couple of backend uh, routers that are 12 U. So what do we do? Well, very simple. We take the number of devices times the U space, right? So we have 50 times one, 420 times two and so forth. And then we come to the total, which is the rec space available, which was 50 times 42, right? And we divide that over each other. So that leads to a factor of 0 0.51, right? Again, this is just in the formula. 0.4, uh, which is basically the first one, uh, uh, 50 point one and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So when we are going to calculate the total CRURF, we take the previous factors that we have in the various scenarios, 
Uh, so we're looking at the stranded capacity, the power utilization, and so forth, and divided strictly by five, uh, the five items. And in this case, the overall uh, CRUR facility for this particular data center looks at 0 0.45. So that is how it looks now, just to share with you, and let me have a quick one here. If you give me one second, then let me make one change because obviously we want to hide the customer name uh, and then I'll share you. Let me quickly stop this sharing and then I'll share another screen. Uh, where is it, where is it, where is it? Okay, that is this one, let me share. Hopefully you can see it, <clears throat> okay. So this is one of those things. So when we do an audit for customers, uh, this is one of the examples. So in this case, we have uh, this customer available where we did the calculation on the strand of capacity. We looked at the power utilization uh, that they used, the mechanical, uh, the MPUR. We looked at the MCUR, and we also looked at the uh, allocation in terms of the uh, MCUR, sorry, and the REC allocation. And basically what we then do, yeah, we can actually provide on the dashboard the overall CRUR uh, as well as the individual CRURs. So here the customer can see that, you know, in this case, we are not really doing a great job on PCUR. We're not really doing a great job. Actually, we are quite, quite okay on this particular factor. Let me scroll right back again on the MPUR, they're quite okay. SPCR, not too bad as typically average, especially in a N plus one, uh, N scenario. The IAUR is not too bad. So overall, this customer is you know, doing reasonable. Now, there's still quite a few things that they can maximize on, especially on the uh, utilization ratios. Uh, they clearly have a lot of space. So in this case, the customer can say, hey, overall, we are not too bad, but we clearly are underutilizing our facility. So there is either space to growth, which could be good news, right? Especially if you're looking at a growth scenario, or you could say, you know what, we pretty much maxed out with IT, you know, an enterprise data center, there's not a lot that's going to be added. So this clearly means that we have over-designed our facility. So if you want to build another data center, because this was, uh, one is getting old, uh, this is something that we need to take to into account. Uh, because as I said before, uh, typically we are over-designing and under-utilizing. And in this particular customer case, that was clearly one of those scenarios. Let me stop this one and go back to the main screen. Share. So as a summary, yeah, before we go to the Q&A, yeah, CRUF calculation requires you to collect data about the UBS egg distance, uh, uh, especially, and also the, the way you have done the redundancy design. Again, kilowatt for UPS, yeah, kilowatt for the egg listener, and be careful, and we need to have the sensible uh, kilowatt, not the overall kilowatt, okay? You need to, of course, also look at, say, the new capacity that you have installed and what you are using, and then basically do a calculation of all the subcomponents and then basically look at that. And subcomponents eh, in uh, and sub ratios could also be for each and every customer. So again, if you have a commercial data center, then you might want to look at this particular ratio for each customer. So you also know, you know which customer is heavily oversubscribed, which one is undersubscribed. And then of course you can take certain measures uh, from there. Um, either telling them to you know uh, cut down on the subscription so that you can allocate space for customers that are really in trouble. Uh, yesterday I was at a uh, event of W Media where we spoke with uh, certain customers, and one of the common things uh, that the data center is now complaining about is the availability of power. But the funny part is that most of the power, yeah, uh, uh, capacity in the traditional commercial data centers. Most data centers still have plenty of capacity left in real life, but they can't allocate it because the customer has over oversubscribed. So what I'm trying to say here, let's say that the data center has five rooms uh, sold, each 500, uh, say at 100 kilowatt. That means the co-location site has now 500 kilowatt allocated, huh? five times 100 kilowatt for each user. But there are plenty of users that are clearly not hitting the 100 kilowatt. So theoretically, they've oversubscribed, but the commercial data center cannot allocate extra space to somebody else because, yeah, uh, the commitment is that if you need it, we have 100 kilowatt available for you. Now, in that case, of course, what a commercial data center could do based on CRUR, say, hey, you've clearly oversubscribed. Why don't we free up some of the space for you that might lead in a reduction of 
you know, uh, money in terms of subscription. And then that extra allocation can be allocated for other customers that really need it and therefore will subscribe to a higher, higher ratio. So this is where CRUR can really, you know, uh, comes in handy. Again, if you want to have resources uh, on our website, the epi-ap.com slash CRUR, you can download the document. Yeah, if you want to have more details in uh, calculation, et cetera. So with that, we coming to the Q&A session. So the best way to do that is go to the Q&A box. So if you look at your screen, there is a Q&A box and there you can type in the question and then the page will do the moderation. So she will pick out the questions uh, that she think are relevant or most relevant for the folks. And then uh, I will hopefully be able to answer all your questions. So Paige, over to you. Thank you, Edward. Okay, first question. We have a few questions already coming in. First question is, uh, why is seven days chosen where a lot of customers have monthly compute cycles? Okay, well, seven days was chosen purely as, you know, that is easy to measure and it allows you to have, you know, a better reporting on CIUR on a continuous basis. But there is no issue to stress that over a month. Uh, in a way, theoretically, you could say, even if you spread it over a year, it will be even nicer, right? Because then you have a really good idea over a longer period of time. Uh, but there is no issue. If you as a, an operator uh, do monthly cycles, then fantastic. I would say stretch it to the monthly cycle because that gives you a better average and then apply that. So seven is the, what we consider to be the minimum. But again, this is only applicable if you have a high varying load. If you are you know, less than 10, 15%, then theoretically don't have to worry about it. Uh, but again, seven days is our guideline. If you want to stretch it to a month, fantastic. Very good. Thanks, Edward. Uh, another question is, why do we need to use kilowatt for the UPS instead of the KVA rating? As that is what most vendors include in their brochures. True, true, true. Uh, well, yes, very right. Uh, most of the time when we buy UPS, uh, the vendor will say KVA rating. Uh, because that is the highest rating. So, for example, uh, it, uh, if I buy 100 kVA UPS, then typically I would have only 0.8 uh, power factor. So that means you would have a, an actually an 80 kilowatt uh, UPS, or in some cases uh, uh, 0.9, so you get 90 kilowatt. But yeah, uh, 100 looks better than 80 in the brochure, right? So that's why a lot of vendors are advocating the kVA rating. So you need to ask what is the power factor or most of the UPS guys, if you ask them what is my actual KW rating, they will be able. KVA is what we call apparent power, which is a combination of factors. I won't go into too much of the electrical uh, lessons here, uh, but kilowatt is real energy. That is basically uh, what also your electrical company is charging you for. So that is why we take KW as the actual rating for the calculations. And that's why you need that number for the UPS. Okay, thank you, Edward. Uh, I see more questions coming in. So the next question is, how can we calculate the ratios if we have centralized UPS systems, but decentralized air conditioning systems, which are spread over a different number of computer rooms? Okay. Um, okay, so you said you have a centralized UPS, but multiple computer rooms, right? Okay, so what we then do if the, if, so what we basically looking at, say a UPS serves, for example, five different computer rooms, then we take the KW rating of the UPS that is feeding those five computer rooms, and we look at the air conditioning systems for those five computer rooms. So we always try to match the air conditioning capacity with the UPS capacity that is feeding those rooms. Okay, so. Uh, in this scenario, where you say you have uh, uh, multiple computer rooms, you take the KW rating of all the air conditioners in those multiple computer rooms that are connected to one UPS infrastructure. Okay, because that's the ratio that we're looking at. Okay, thank you, Edward. Uh, next question How can we, as a co location data center, use CRUR as we have little control over our customers? Yeah, uh, uh, yes and no. Um, it's sometimes difficult indeed to have, uh, uh, you know, control over your customers, right? Uh, you cannot say, well, you're only using 50 kilowatt. I want you to throw another 100 kilowatt because I want you to uh, use what you have uh, signed up for. Uh, so that is a hard one. But you can, of course, go to the customers and say, hey, you're heavily underutilizing the infrastructure. 
Um, so we want you to either, you know, lower your subscription uh, or, you know, maybe there are cleverer ways to allocate power and cooling for you. Now, of course, we could argue and say, hey, as a commercial data center, if somebody has uh, signed up for 100 kilowatts, but they only use two kilowatts, why do I care? Well, there are two reasons why you should care as a commercial data center operator. Low utilization will impact your PUE. And as I said in the uh, training or the web, uh, the, uh, the workshop that we had before, a high PUE can lead to penalization in some countries because more governments are now forcing data center operators to you know, report on PUE and hit a certain number. The other thing, as I just indicated as well, uh, data center operators are sometimes struggling to have power for new customers. So if you have customers that sign up for 100 kilowatt but only use two kilowatt, you cannot say, well, I don't care. Let's give that other 90 kilowatt to somebody else because theoretically you have promised that customer to be able to provide 100 kilowatt if and when needed. And of course, I don't know whether the customer is going to wheel in some equipment tomorrow. So at least then you can open up the discussion with the customer and say, hey, we noticed the underutilization based on CRUR. Um, are you planning for additional capacity or can we allocate some of the capacity to other customers that are struggling and need that capacity? And of course, what you lose on customer A, you might win back on customer B, but it leads, leads to an overall better performance of the data center. So, Long answer for a short question. <laughs> Good answer, Edward. Okay, we have another question here. What would you consider a satisfactory range for the CRUR? One. <laughs> <laughs> The perfect answer is one where everything is perfectly optimized, but obviously there's wishful thinking, right? So I think for data centers, if you start hitting a 0 0.6, 0 0.7 range, you know, you should be lucky. Uh, if you can boost it up higher, that would be fantastic. Anything under 0 0.5 or 0 0.4, that indicates that, you know, there is some work to do uh, uh, in that sense, or you just have planned for a large capacity outbreak later on. That could be, uh, again, uh, some of the data center operators that start they might have only one floor occupied and the other two floors are still unoccupied. Well, there's not much that you can do. Uh, but yeah, uh, you know, 0 0.7, 0 0.8 is what I would like to shoot for. Okay. Um, I see a question appearing in the chat. I think we want to address this. Uh, is it that PUE is similar to CRUR? Okay. Um, no, it is not. Uh, PUE um, is allocating or is basically comparing the IT capacity in kilowatt versus the total power coming into the building. Uh, very roughly, there is some nuance to it, but that's what it basically is. Um, it does not look at sizing of you know capacity of, for example, IT load versus air conditioning. It only looks at how much power is being used by IT, how much power is being used by the uh, by the whole building. So it looks more at efficiency of the UPSs, efficiency of the cooling infrastructure, et cetera. It does not tell you anything about whether, you know, the kilowatt of the UPS is right sized for uh, the IT load. It doesn't tell you anything about whether air conditioning capacity is right sized based on uh, power capacity. So uh, it's a very different metric. I would personally, as a data center operator owner, whether enterprise or commercial, I would use both metrics. Yeah, PUE is a good metric to look at, say, how efficient is your uh, you know, uh, facility equipment, uh, power and cooling equipment. And I would use CRUR more for optimization of your design uh, and or capacity planning. Thanks. Thanks for the clarification, Edward. I think we will take one last question. Is it prudent to use a PF of 0 0.8 or 0 0.9 for calculation? Okay. Um, basically, uh, whether you use 0.8 or 0.9 really depends on the UPS that you have. Yeah, theoretically, yeah, if you're looking at, say, a UPS, uh, what we need to do, if we know the KVA rating only, we need to find out what the output power factor, so not the input, but the output power factor is of that UPS, and that will then tell us what the uh, KW rating is. So as an example, if I have 100 KVA UPS and my power factor is 0.8, that means that this UPS can deliver a maximum of 80 kilowatt, right? If I have a UPS that happens to have an output power factor of 0.9, that would mean that it can handle or supply 90 kW. So theoretically, a higher power factor is better for the UPS, right? You get more kilowatts per kVA that you've purchased. So that would be the best 
uh, nucleus. But whether you use point A to point 0.9 is purely dependent on what type of nucleus you have installed. So that's the first one to check. Okay, thanks, Edward. I think we have time for one last question, but I'm not very sure what is the question. <laughs> okay, um, let me read it out. We have considered the rack density six kilowatt rated power. Accordingly, we have loaded the rack with six servers with one kilowatt rated power due which rack size exhausted. But the actual consumption is 0.5 to one kilowatt. Moreover, it is a 42U rack. Okay, um, so rack density is six kilowatt, and then loaded racks with six kilowatts of one server. Yeah. Um, so basically the maximum has been reached right because the rack is six kilowatt. But is that the actual consumption is at 0.5 to one kilowatt? Yes. Okay, okay, well, okay. So if I, if I understand the question correctly, that means uh, we have a rack uh, there is 42 U in rack space, but yeah, we can only fit in, uh, you know, six servers because yeah, uh, that is the maximum because then we start hitting the power maximum. Uh, but the actual server is not using one kilowatt; it's using somewhere around the 0.5 to one kilowatt. So that's the scenario. Now, in this case, you can see clearly that you know the C, the R U R, uh, the R U U R, will have a very low number because you have a massive rack, but there's only so much you can put in there because the power capacity have been exceeded already. Now, is that a problem? Well, yeah, uh, you can argue whether that is a problem. Yeah, you can, of course, not say I'm going to install uh, 10 new high racks because that just doesn't well, it exist, but it's not something we put in data center. So unfortunately, your RUUR will get a hit because, you know, you're under the utilization uh, on your rack space. But since you've done your maximum power capacity, yeah, there's not much more what you can do. So, yeah, uh, I think in this case, there is a good and a bad because it looks like you have maximized the power per rack. Now, maximizing the power per rack will have a, a positive impact on the power capacity, right? On the PCUR, et cetera, and hopefully also on your mechanical versus power rating, but your RUUR might look low. So if I go back to that uh, picture that I showed you with the graphs, right? Your RUUR will be very low but the other factors might be very high. So then as a, as a somebody that looking at my CI uh, or my CRURF, I could say, you know what, we are at 60%, but that is caused because we have a heavy utilization problem in the racks because of this problem. Is that a problem? Not really, because my power and mechanical capacity might be well done. So there's not much that I can do about it. So. Uh, that's why, you know, we're looking at the individual components, not just at the CIUR overall, because that yeah, does not tell the whole story. That's why we break it out in those individual pieces. And then the customer itself can determine whether they are happy with it or whether they say, hey, we have an underutilization. Maybe we should spread the load in the racks a bit better or those kinds of things. Okay, we have come to the end of the workshop. So I would like to... Once again, thank everyone for joining us. Uh, take away the information, use it, test it, implement it. And remember that we are here for you. So if you need any assistance applying what we have gone through today, please uh, do reach out to us. And once again, thank you for your time. And Edward, any final last words? No, well, again, yeah, as usual, uh, thank you very much. I uh, hope it was useful. Uh, as Pace indicated, if you have any questions further, then pop us an email on uh, support at epi-ap.com and we will answer your questions around uh, the uh, uh, CIUR. Uh, we also would like to hear from you if you start implementing it to, to listen to, to you, what, what questions you have, what trouble you might have had, and some of the ratios that you have achieved that will be lovely. And uh, well, we're looking forward to uh, the next session, which will be more around the IT. Uh, so the CRUR IT, um, which the dates uh, you will know, it uh, will be conveyed over LinkedIn, etc. So we hope to see you then. So thank you all.